Hello and welcome, my name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at Philadelphia, Volume 1, by Rodney Barnes, Jason Sean Alexander, Lewis NCT, and Marshall Dillon. Published initially as single issues, this first trade volume covers issues 1 to 6, published between 2019 and 2020, and was itself collected and published in 2020 by Image Comics. As you may recall, I had initially been planning on reading the entire three-volume run in one go, but I ran out of time and felt like I was rushing far too much, so this is more of an initial thoughts video. Not rated, but tagged as adult by Goodreads, content notes for all things fairly graphic and vampiric, masses of people engaging in violence, hospitals in horror, cops, blood splatters, racist history of American colonization, nudity, and a sex club. And for this black comics video, I would recommend another book about vampires by a black creator. This time I would suggest you pick up Fledgling by one Octavia E. Butler. Quote, the story of an apparently young, amnesiac girl whose alarmingly inhuman needs and abilities lead her to a startling conclusion. She is in fact a genetically modified 53-year-old vampire. Forced to discover what she can about her stolen former life, she must at the same time learn who wanted and still wants to destroy her and those she cares for, and how she can save herself. Fledgling is a captivating novel that tests the limits of otherness and questions what it means to be truly human." End quote. The first Butler book I ever read, I feel like it's one of her least discussed works. Having gone through a vampire phase back in high school, I've only really dabbled since. Tried rereading a bit of Anne Rice this year and found myself terribly bored. What are some of your favorite vampire reads? Circling back to the book at hand, let us flip to the back of the book where all the creator bios appear. First off, we have Rodney Barnes. Quote, Rodney is an award-winning writer-producer of television, film, and comics. His credits include HBO's Showtime, Hulu's Wu-Tang, and American Saga, Marvel's Runway, Ways, stars American Gods, The Boondocks, My Wife and Kids, Everybody Hates Chris, and the Academy Awards. Jason Sean Alexander is an artist slash writer who has worked in comics for over 20 years, receiving two Eisner Award nominations and the silver medal from the Society of Illustration. Alongside his comics career, Jason exhibits his fine artwork in galleries in Los Angeles, New York, London, Berlin, and has shown in the National Portrait Gallery of the Smithsonian. Along with Philadelphia, his series Empty Zone has garnered much critical acclaim. Among his list of credits, he is co-writer an artist on Spawn, and has contributed his art to Hellboy, Abe Sapien, Batman, Superman, The Escapist, The Shadow, The Secret, Frostbite, 30 Days of Nights, Queen and Country, Marvel Zombies, Hellraiser, and more. Louis NCT is a Mediterranean storyteller, illustrator, painter, writer, and colorist who has been creating and self-publishing comic books since high school. He studied at Polytechnic University of Valencia and began his career as an illustrator, creating artwork for role-playing games and short films. His recent works include coloring American comic books such as Empty Zone for Image and Frostbite for DC. He's published several creator-owned graphic novels including Sleepers and Wakomo, and many short stories, including a critically acclaimed manga, Mina no Uta, that appeared in Japanese magazine Tesukomi. He also worked as concept artist and character designer on the animated feature film Another Day of Life. Marshall Dillon has been in the comics and entertainment industry for 25 years, with notable clients including the U.S. Army, the Department of Health, the BBC, Intel, and AT&T. Franchises and properties he's worked on include G.I. Joe, Transformers, Street Fighter, Mega Man, Finding Nemo, and The Muppets, as well as various movie tie-in and video game properties. He's very excited to contribute to Philadelphia and to be part of such a dynamic and an energetic team. End quote. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this first volume of Philadelphia? Founding Fathers, Hack and Slash, Horror, Investigation, Death, and Immortality. The summary over on Goodreads is, quote, When a small-town B-cop comes home to bury his murdered father, the revered Philadelphia detective James Sangster Sr., he begins to unravel a mystery that leads him down a path of horrors and shakes his beliefs to their core. The city was once the symbol of liberty and freedom, has fallen prey to corruption, poverty, and unemployment, brutality, and vampires. But the mystery goes even further when Jimmy's investigation leads him to uncover the source of the outbreak is long thought dead President of the United States, 
John Adams, a man secretly biding his time as he builds an undead army to start a new and bloodier American revolution. There's a reason they coin a phrase, you can't go home, welcome to Philadelphia." End quote. Focusing in on the art, the creative team really delivered on some great blood splatter aesthetics, from the page layouts to the typography, an often neglected element of any comic. This comic screams bloody horror. Writing-wise, action in comics often makes my brain fog over combined with having to read this digitally on my phone. I'm not surprised my brain was left grasping for a compelling plotline. My main critique, not unique to myself, is how nonsensical the choice of John Adams as leader of the vampires felt. I mean, there's no shortage of so-called founding fathers I would have pegged as king of the vampires before John Adams, but that seems to be sort of the point because Barnes picked John Adams after watching Hamilton a handful of times and feeling like the guy was underserved by so-called America's founding mythos. But all it seemed to come to is the man who has been largely forgotten by history textbooks went on for the next few hundred years to continue to not get up to very much. But watch everything. I am a bit more curious to see how much more Abigail Adams we do or do not get because, well, becoming someone whose personality suddenly revolves 75% around sex and being sexy is a fairly predictable vampire trope. It was still a big change for her and provided some nice contrast. As I try to articulate on this channel, I don't think tropes are an automatically bad thing, and I actually think a few more tropes would have been beneficial. Otherwise, I probably missed something, but gender, sexuality, and class felt largely like we were left to assume everyone is part of the mainstream status quo. But vampires. The violent racial hierarchy of so-called America felt more realized than average. And thinking about vampires through a disability lens, I feel like there are some things that could be said but not here, I guess. To conclude, I'm now less sure that the series is over for the moment. I had a vague recollection that it was, but I don't know why. I'll be crossing my fingers, hoping that my library decides to pick up physical copies of the series. I'm still interested in reading further, but I think we'll settle on 3.5 stars out of five for now. Bye y'all, keep reading and organize to end capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.